In this episode of my Houseplant Care 101 series, I'm going to talk about how to get not only huge philodendron leaves, but really get those philodendrons to pump out their adult form. Now, philodendrons have what we call juvenile leaves, which are their smaller leaf shape, they're not mature, and then over time, given the correct conditions and some tips and tricks, which I'll talk about today, they eventually get their adult form, and this process is called metamorphosis. Now, there are over 400 different species of philodendrons, and they all have a lot in common, but they do have some things that vary, so it will depend on what philodendron you have as far as the care for them, but we can lump these into three main categories, which really does help to simplify things. So first we have our climbing philodendrons or our vining philodendrons. These will be ones that you see in the hanging baskets. These are also the ones that you will see climbing up planks or moss poles. Then we have our creeping or crawling philodendrons. These are the ones that usually will, instead of climbing up, they kind of crawl across the planter. And these are your philodendron McDowells, your philodendron Gloriosums over here. Then you also have your self-heading philodendrons. These are the Birkins and the Rojo Congos. And you don't really hear much about self-heading philodendrons as much because there just aren't as many of them. Um, and they require like the they're the easiest ones to take care of as well most philodendron are very easy but self-heading you know they don't climb they don't crawl they just kind of stay in their compact little planter even though there are three different categories they all for the most part have the same care and things that you want to keep in mind to help them get really really massive so i'm going to go over those first and then i will at the end kind of share the different things to keep in mind depending on the type of philodendron you have whether it's climbing crawling or self-heading I'm listing all the timestamps below. Now a huge thank you to repotme.com for partnering with me on this episode. They are a wonderful resource for the plant community. I'm completely addicted to their soils and planters. Now I will talk a little bit more about them later, but first let's jump into it. The first topic I have to cover because I really feel it is so important and often overlooked with philodendron is giving them enough light. Now philodendrons are known for being tolerant of lower light conditions. Like they're okay. I mean, they're one of the more easygoing plants. You can put them in a lower light area and they won't die off. You know, usually they'll put out a little bit more new growth, but if you're wanting to really give them pristine, like ideal conditions to let them grow into their adult form leaves, they do need that light. I mean, it's really, really important. And that is one of the things that I've learned over time is, wow, you know, my philodendrons do so much better when I give them enough light and their leaves get huge. So I would say, I mean, they really like bright indirect light. Um, if you put them in a spot though where they have bright light, you know, sunlight shining on the leaves, they will burn. So just don't put them in an area where the sun is just gonna be beating on their leaves to prevent that sunburn. But they really do like that bright indirect light throughout the day. Now again, many of us appreciate philodendrons because they don't require much light. And a lot of us don't have that, you know, bright indirect light in many of our homes. So if that's the case for you, I, which is the case for me in some areas of my home, I highly recommend supplemental lighting. Now there are so many options nowadays for grow lights. You can put them in your light fixtures and a lot of them don't have that kind of like blaring, blinding color that, you know, we associate with grow lights. So here's an example and I've only had it there for maybe a month or two and my philodendron, here's the before and after. It totally changed the game. I mean, this is how powerful light is when it comes to our philodendrons and why it's the first one um, that I'm talking about. So yeah, don't underestimate supplemental lights. Now the leaves are the solar panels of the plants and if they're covered in dust, even a light layer of dust, it's gonna have a really, really hard time catching the light. So I mean, especially if you have your plant in a lower light area, if it's covered in dust, I mean, it's really, really not being given a fair chance. All right, next up is fertilizing. And fertilizing is hugely important. It doesn't have to be complicated. It can be very straightforward. 
but if you're wanting to grow big, beautiful, mature leaves on your plant, there's no way it's going to do that unless it has enough nutrition. Um, that's super, super important for these big, beautiful leaves that we love so much. Now you do have a lot of options when it comes to fertilizing. You could go with an organic option like a fish fertilizer. I know sometimes that's smelly, but a lot of people prefer to go the organic route. You could also go with a synthetic option whatever the case may be you know to keep it simple i'm kind of a simple plant parent i like to keep things easy i do recommend going with whatever you go with just make sure it says for house plants on there and those will usually be a balanced fertilizer whether it's a 555 a 10 10 10 a 20 20 20 going with a balanced fertilizer will just you know ensure that it will have all of the things that your house plant needs. I do recommend starting off at 50% strength. So just be really, really careful to read the instructions on the fertilizer and go at 50% strength to prevent you know, burning the roots of your plant um, and just add as needed. Now you'll want to fertilize definitely during the growing months, you know, spring and summer, and then you can taper off for the fall and winter months. When you're fertilizing your plant, don't get the fertilizer on the leaves because it could burn the leaves. Philodendron watering is hugely important. We want our plants to have enough water so that it will grow, they'll grow quickly, but we don't want to water them too much, um, which can quickly kill them if they're, you know, if they get root rot. They can definitely handle being thirsty way better than they can handle too much water in the soil. The best way to prevent overwatering is to check the soil every single time that you're watering. Definitely don't water on a schedule. Maybe take that day that you're used to watering and instead of automatically watering, check that the plant needs it first. So you can use your finger, you can use a stick, you can use a moisture meter, you can lift the planter up to see if it has any water in there, if it's heavy or not. Just make sure that the soil is not moist from your previous watering. Definitely make sure your soil is very well draining and that the planter or pot that you're using has a lot of drainage holes. This next one isn't completely necessary. However, it is very helpful, specifically with big leaves and the secret is humidity. I don't have a humidifier going on right now. Um, the humidity here in North Carolina stays really good during the summers. It's, it stays at, at least 60% or higher during the summer months and that 60% or above is ideal for philodendrons. So I'm seeing a ton of new growth. I'm seeing the big beautiful mature leaves coming out. So like I've said it's not necessary but if big beautiful lush adult form leaves is your goal, then anything under 40% humidity, I would say go for it. Get a humidifier. There's a lot of great options out there. All right, so pest management. Your plant, no matter what, is going to have a really, really hard time um, meeting its potential if it's dealing with pests all the time. It can be super, super stressful on the plant. So I'm quickly going to touch on my favorite pest prevention or pest treatment options. I'm not gonna go in super detail. Maybe I'll do another episode on it. But so first up is fungus gnats. We all know fungus gnats, they're so annoying. Um, the way that I found the best way to treat them that I have 100% success rate with is with mosquito bits tea. Now mosquito bits are really well known in the plant community, but what I'd like to do and I don't even remember how I found out about it. I think I read about it on Instagram, but I like to make a mosquito bits tea. So you take the mosquito bits and it doesn't have to be exact. It's like a few tablespoons per gallon of water. And I like to use, I find these little filter bags on Amazon, but people use tea bags, old pantyhose. I mean, you can get really creative with what you use. Put them in that so that the little bits don't float around in your watering can. Pop that in your watering can and then get really hot water. Now you don't want to use boiling water because it will kill the bacteria that's actually you're extracting that will kill the gnats um, but yeah just let it sit for a while let it cool off so you'll want to do this every time you water until you see that the gnats are completely gone next up are spider mites spider mites are such a pain but I have had a lot of success with insecticidal soap so next up aphids thrips and mealybugs I'm just gonna jump to it. The thing that I've had the most success with are the systemic granules that you sprinkle them in the soil and you water your plant. The plant absorbs whatever's in those systemic granules and as the pests kind of munch or suck on the leaves of your plant, 
they get a dosage of that chemical and it kills them off. So, so with the goal of allowing our plant to progress from juvenile leaves into adult form leaves, repotting plays an important role. And there really is a Goldilocks kind of spot when it comes to repotting philodendrons because they do enjoy being somewhat root bound. They don't appreciate a lot of excess soil around their roots because then what that plant's gonna do is spend a lot of time kind of filling up that pot with roots instead of working on growing those big, beautiful, mature leaves. So we kind of want to wait until last minute to have to repot them. But if that plant is desperate for some space for its roots, it's so root bound that it can't really do anything else, then that is actually really going to prohibit new growth of leaves, which is what we're after. So. I, you know, there is that Goldilocks phase. So I would say if your plant is pretty root bound, there is an excess soil, um, you know, there isn't room for that plant to grow more roots. You see the roots coming out the top, the roots coming out the bottom. It's a good idea to repot. Very important, don't go too large on the planter. Just go one to two inches. That way the plant won't have to spend a lot of time you know, putting out new roots, um, but it will give it enough space to grow roots that it needs to help the plant put out new leaf growth. Also, if you have too much soil in that planter, because the planter's, you know, enormous compared to what it was used to, it's gonna have a lot of excess soil that's gonna saturate with water when you water it, and that saturated watery soil is going to potentially cause root rot to your plant because those roots aren't going to be able to absorb all that moisture. So very simple, just go one to two inches bigger. Again, make sure that the planter has great drainage. That's super, super important. Now I like to use nursery pots and then use cover pots as needed so that I can take that nursery pot and put it in maybe a basket or a cute cover pot or whatever, but the nursery pot stays the same because I'm not trying to replant my philodendron, you know, every time I wanna decorate with a new pot. So I really like to use the slotted orchid pots from repotme.com, our partner for this episode. Again, like I've said, they're a great resource. Um, so their planters are wonderful. They have all sorts of different slotted orchid pots that have great drainage. They help promote airflow throughout the roots. And I really love that their pots are clear. I'm totally addicted to them because I can see if there's moisture in the soil. And I can also see how the roots are doing. Now, soil is very, very important. You could make your own soil. If you choose to do that, that's totally fine. I did that for the longest, longest time. And just make sure use, maybe you can use like a 50% potting mix. And then the other 50% make sure that you have a lot of organic, you know, chunky material, whether that's orchid bark or perlite or pumice. You just want to make sure that there's great, great drainage when you do water that plant. So I really love their philodendron potting mix from repotme.com. It has all of those things that I'm talking about. It's like the perfect customized formula already. And they have lots of different soil options. So in their houseplant section, they have it for monstera, philodendrons, cacti and succulents. So far, all of the care tips that I've talked about um, to help your plant get to the adult form leaves are relevant no matter what type of philodendron you have, climbing, crawling, or self-heading. Now this next part varies depending on what type of philodendron you have. So first up are the vining philodendrons. Now these, this is a philodendron micans. Now these philodendron mican leaves can actually get a lot bigger than this, than what we typically see when they're in their hanging baskets, which is usually how we see philodendron micans. Now the best way to do this is with a moss pole or a plank, um, and you want the plant to attach itself to either the moss pole or the plank. So if you use a moss pole, you do want to kind of keep that moss pole moist, or if you use a plank, you wanna make sure that the plant is kind of pushed up against, against that plank. So some people will use staples and then take the staples out once the plank, once the plant is attached to that plank. Um, or you can, you know, tie it with a rubber band. You know, there's a lot of different stuff that you can do. Now I set that up actually in my plant room. I did a video a long, a long time ago and I made a mistake, a, a, a terrible, terrible 
mistake. I used painted boards and I thought that would work. You know, a lot of people have plants I saw crawling up their painted walls. I was like, well, these plants could attach, you know, to a painted plank. It didn't work. It, they did not want to attach and it has worked in some ways. Like I, the fact that the plant is able to climb up, I tied it with string or twine up against the board. So it is getting that kind of upwards climbing motion, which enabled it to, you know, grow a bit. Um, my philodendron pedatum is looking really great. It's just growing like crazy. But if it was attached to those planks, it would be, I mean, the maturity I'd have on those leaves would be a lot more substantial. So Long story short, make sure that the planks are raw wood. So moral of the story with your vining and climbing philodendrons, give them something to climb if you want those mature form leaves. They will love you for it. So the crawling philodendrons, like this beautiful philodendron McDowell I have here, are really nice because they're not trying to crawl up. They're not trying to, you know, vine over, hang over. They're, they're great because they'll just kind of stand up straight somewhat in the planter but they do crawl, they will grow kind of outwards. Now, sometimes they'll grow under the soil, depending how that they're planted, they'll grow under the soil or they'll grow on top of the soil. Now, if they grow under the soil, then eventually they will butt up against the planter. And if that happens and they don't have an opportunity to kind of grow out of their planter, then they can suffocate themselves and they won't grow anymore and it's detrimental to the plant. And if that's the case, then you just want to repot it, right? Like it's a, you'll want to stay on top of repotting crawling philodendrons a lot more than you would say a vining philodendron because, you know, vining philodendrons will grow up where crawling will grow along the planter. Like this one, it crawled out of its pot, so I kind of have can take some liberty on when I repot. Now I've seen people do some really cool stuff. Um, you can take a second pot if you want and put it underneath the philodendron, which is what I might actually do with this one. I found this tip from Only Plants. He has a wonderful YouTube channel incredibly helpful with houseplant care. But what he did was he took a pot and put it underneath the philodendron and kind of those aerial roots ended up attaching to the new pot and growing into that pot. So whenever he did end up propagating it, it's called air layering, but he already had it set up in a planter ready to go and I just thought that was such a great idea and it also causes less trauma to the plant. The other thing you can do that a lot of people do with crawling philodendrons is get a planter that's rectangular or trough shaped and when you're repotting just start it on this side and kind of point it in this direction so the plant will just kind of grow along that rectangular you know trough planter and you won't have to repot it as you know as often. Just know that anytime you have a cutting and you're trying to get large large leaves like we're doing now, the top cutting is going to be the one that will off the bat have the largest leaves. So if you're buying a plant and there's different cuttings, always try to get the top cutting because that's the one, like I said, that's going to have the largest leaves. So when it comes to self-heading philodendrons like philodendron bir birkin, like Rojo Congo, you don't have to worry about them climbing you know, you don't have to worry about them crawling out of the planter, like with crawling philodendrons. They're a lot more straightforward. Uh, to get them to have their large leaf shape or mature form leaves, you know, you just want to make sure to do all the things that I mentioned in the beginning of the video. Watering enough, make sure to repot when it needs it, um, make sure it gets good lighting. So the last thing I will say in being a plant parent that I've needed a lot of when wanting to grow these big beautiful plants is to have a lot of patience because it takes time. No matter what I do, no matter how much light I give, fertilizing, all of that, it just takes a really long time sometimes with these plants for them to grow really, really big, so, which leads me to my next piece of advice. Um, you know, sometimes it's worth investing in a already established plant, maybe a bigger plant. Uh, if you can afford it, I will say it, it's definitely worth it because it can take years for them to get really really big but sometimes that's the fun in it is kind of seeing them grow from a small plant to a big plant 
So it really depends on what you're wanting. Now we do have an amazing community on here. So if you have any suggestions on growing huge, beautiful philodendron leaves, please leave them in the comments, not just for myself, but for everybody else to see. Now Repot Me is offering 10% off any houseplant soil. Just go to their website in my description and use code Ashley. I hope you have a wonderful rest of the day. You will definitely be seeing me soon. Bye.